Happy 5th of July. Uh, it's a little late. Uh, yesterday was the 4th of July, so uh, celebrating our independence, Independence Day, and um, better late than never. Um, but one of the things I was, um, it, with this 4th of July thing going on, and, and of course the, the latest news with the acceptance of uh, same-sex so-called marriages, and um, I was thinking about that America, where we're going, and um, it, I, it amazed me how all of a sudden everybody just started coming out of the woodwork. It was like a like an explosion of things that people wanted. So, yeah, you know, I was watching that there is this um, um, young woman and a man who um, she wanted to marry her father, her blood father. And so they're moving to, I think it was New Jersey, so that they can get married uh, because of the same-sex unions. And, and, and actually, New Jersey allows incest now. It's legal. Um, and, and there's another guy in Idaho who wanted to, I can't remember if it was Idaho or Wyoming, he wanted to marry two women. So they want to practice polygamy. And, of course, after the, the decision of our justices, there uh, we're having, you know, the gay pride parades. And I don't, I don't know if you watch them, but, I mean, it really is nasty. Um, you can probably look it up on the, on the Internet. Uh, but they, they'll show you videos of men having sex with men in, at the, in a float, in a parade. And they typically always do this. And I'm like, wow, it's like, is that what our soldiers died for this country for? I mean, this plethora of stuff just going on and on. It's just this endless of, of all these um, uh, really nasty things going on. It's not marriage. Where is the church going to go with this? It's not marriage. Uh, the church will never do it. It will never condone it. And me personally, I will never acknowledge it as marriage because it's not. It's not the nature of what marriage is. And so, you know, if, if you have family members, maybe they got caught up into that lifestyle. They're suffering for it, but maybe they want to get married. I encourage you not to go. If you go, it, 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 you know, don't even go to the party. Of course, there's a lot of nasty stuff, that things that do happen, but uh, don't even go. You can go to their home. They can come to your house. You love them, but the action hurts them, and that's why uh, one of the reasons why the church does not condone it. Will I be arrested? Will priests be arrested? Bishops be arrested? We, we might be. And what does the future hold? Well, we'll probably end up doing is we'll probably end up not having, because today when a priest marries somebody, they act in the interest of the county or the state. And then so when somebody gets married here at the church, it, it's an act as a priest, but it's also an act of the state marrying you. And what will probably happen is priests will no longer have that ability to act in the name of the state which means people will have to get married at the Justice of the Peace first and then come to the church and get the sacrament. Um, that's probably what will happen because that's what they do in Mexico. Um, countries that are not friendly to the faith 
that's usually what happens. I know Mexico's a Catholic, by tradition it's been a Catholic culture, but it's not operated by Catholic people. Um, so, but one of the things I wanted to do, just to kind of remind us of the holiness of things, we've got, lost that sense of holiness and sanctity, uh, and that's where I see a lot of problem in this as well. And so what I wanted to do is just kind of focus on this beautiful song, America the Beautiful. So if you want to, you can open up to number 569. It's the last song we're going to do. It's, this is such a beautiful song. Um, it, you, it really proves to us that our, our country really is founded on faith, on Christian principles. Uh, so this is an old song. So it was, it was written, it was published as a poem in 1895. I think that's what it was. So it's been around for over 100 years. Um, so kind of going over this, what does this song say? This kind of shows to us again that we are what we're founded on. What's the idea? What's the ideals of America when our founding fathers in the first 100 years uh, of citizenship, what they thought? Starts off here. Oh, beautiful for spacious skies, for amber waves of grain, for purple mountain majesties above the fruited plain. What are we doing there? We're glorifying God for the gifts that he has given us, especially in the very land that we have. No country in the world has what we have. We have, we have the Grand Canyon. We have deserts. We have high mountains. We got right here in the Middle East. It's the most fertile, some of the most fertile ground in the world. And they're open fields where we can plow and grow fruit. No other nation has all of this. You got Hawaii, you can go to Alaska, you can go to Florida. We are such a blessed country, incredibly blessed country. So we're praising God for this. And it continues on. America, America, God shed his grace on thee. Man. Praising God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for giving us great grace. And it ends up, see, this first one is like thanking God. God shed his grace on thee. The last verse is saying the same thing, but because we're asking for more grace because we need it. So the first verse, thanking God for it. Fourth verse, pleading God for more because we need it. The second verse, it kind of looks like, and why, why do we plead for it? Um, second verse, America, America, God man thine every flaw. We are not perfect. We're not. We're sinners. It's like the church, right? We are a church of sinners for sinners. We're here to help each other grow in holiness and grace. And that's what it means to be a citizen of this country, to help each other grow in grace, to help each other get to our final destiny, God. We need him. Now, what, what struck me about this with the song is this next verse. Confirm thy soul in self-control, thy liberty in law. This is something very different. This is an, an amazing thing. First of all, let me make, there is like a lot, of Christ, a lot of music, modern music, we don't think there's a connection from verse to verse. We're separating, boom, boom, boom. Okay, we're very pragmatic. It means absolutely, it's like, oh, we're just, it's just about the melody. It doesn't have anything about the words. No, pay attention to the words. Children, parents, don't like a song because it's got a nice melody. Look at the words, because the words teach you. And I don't care if you don't pay attention to the words. It is teaching you because you're an intellectual being. You're always learning from it. It's very important. God bend thine every flaw. Confirm thy soul in self-control. What's the connection there? The writer 
of the song is saying that self-control is the remedy for the flaws. We have to exercise self-control. Here's this idea. Freedom is not the ability to do whatever you want. Actually, the church offers the definition as liberty and as is the ability to do what you ought. That's the difference. God, mend thine every flaw. God, mend thine every flaw. We're asking God for the, to confirm thy soul in self-control. Give us the ability to have self-control. But we have to participate in his grace. We can't do it alone. We cannot do it alone. It's interesting now. So it fin finishes off thy liberty in law. It doesn't say with thy liberty in law. It says thy liberty in law. What, he's, what this person is doing here is he's defining self-control. Confirm thy soul in self-control, thy liberty in law. So that's the context. Self-control brings liberty in law. With self-control comes freedom. That's why liberty, the definition of liberty, the Catholic understanding, is that it's what you ought to be and not whatever you want. Uh, answer this question for me. Now, you can answer it to yourself. Which brings about more liberty? A coach who tells their players, do whatever you want. Eat, go out and get drunk at night if you want. You don't have to exercise. And the rules of the game, oh, don't bother with them. Or a coach is a little more strict and says, you know, you can't eat, you can't be out partying late at night before the game. you got to obey by the laws and the rules of this. And by golly, you have to know what to do. You have to look at science and discipline yourself to play well. And now you can win games and maybe even a trophy. Which brings more liberty? Having an awful team or great team? I was on one great team in my life. I was on many awful teams in my life. And I can tell you one thing. My experience has been being on the winning team brings more liberty, more freedom, more joy. And so self-control brings more joy, brings more liberty. See, that's why doing whatever you want, having these, these lifestyles, whatever you want to call it, because it's anything now, it doesn't bring liberty. It doesn't bring goodness. When I look at the third verse, Oh, beautiful, for heroes proved. What heroes? The heroes that exercise self-control. Because they want to better themselves. God, mend thine every flaw. And it's also having to do with the sacrifice that our soldiers have, have given us. Oh, beautiful, for heroes proved in liberating strife. That's what he's talking about. The soldiers who gave their very life for us. Our country is not just somebody people died for. Those people were a holy and sacred temple of God. This country has been made holy. It has been sanctified by the blood of the people who gave their life for us. It is holy. We don't tr trash it and shove it down the toilet. Which is interesting here. In liberating strife. Well, isn't that an oxymoron? Liberating, liberation, freedom, and strife, struggle, war. Isn't that something very different? See, the American idea is that you don't have to be afraid of arguments. You can argue with you to each other and and still grow. I mean, hopefully you discover that in marriage. You have arguments and you, you get the challenge for your spouse and, and you grow. And you still love each other. 
And that's a principle of Christianity, a principle of this nation. We're such a diverse, I mean, we're all immigrants. I don't think there's anybody here who could say that they don't have a family, they, they don't have a single family member that didn't come from overseas. We're all diverse. We all mix together in this melting pot. And we grow and we help each other. Who more than self their country loved. Yeah. Many people died for us. It wasn't just their country the people. We make up this country. They died for us. We need to honor that. And mercy more than life. Wow. Isn't that a Christian principle? Isn't that a Catholic principle? To love mercy itself more than life. Put the will of God first rather than ourself. This song is over a hundred years old. This is part of the history of this nation. It was not founded on the Enlightenment. It was founded on princi principles of goodness. Continues. America, America, may God thy gold refine. Taking everything we have and refining it, even the good things we have, because they can always be better. Always looking for something better. Always looking for ways to please God. Yeah. Now this is a kicker. This is amazing. Till all success be nobleness. Hmm. You know, a lot of people think that this idea of capitalism, it's all about, again, with democracy, doing whatever you want. No. Till all success be nobleness. Not using other people as objects. Not tearing people down. It was interesting, I, I, was, I was looking up the definition of liberty, and Wikipedia, believe it or not, Wikipedia is anti-faith and anti-Christian. Uh, they, they can't be outrightly on it, but uh, one of the things they, they commented on was that they said that the fulfillment of liberty, the expression of liberty, is found in the Enlightenment. And that's why USA was founded, because of the Enlightenment there's no way you can say that. The Industrial Revolution proves them wrong because the Industrial Revolution is the baby, the child of the Enlightenment. And the Industrial Revolution used people, and it was the very purpose that we have unions. Now, I'm not the greatest fan of unions because unions have turned around on the people, and they don't necessarily do what they're supposed to do. We need unions because we have a capitalistic society. And that's why I know some people might be offended by this, but this is really important to understand as Catholics and as Catholics from America. If we lose God in this country, this country will become the most wicked country earth and humanity has ever seen. Because capitalism gives you the ability to do whatever you want without God. And that means you can take advantage of people, you can exploit people, you can go any which way and abuse anybody you want for greater gain of yourself. But with God, with God, it's awesome. It's awesome. Because liberty, freedom, democracy is an expression of how God made us free. To use free will to do what is good, to do what we ought 
That's why God created us. And that's why our nation has been so great, and we need to make sure that it remains so great. It was interesting, I was looking up the word noble. What, what does it mean in the dictionary? And it said, kingly, stately, aristocratic. I'm like, wow, that's... It's, it's, gonna, it's an irony because America totally rejects kings. <laughs> totally rejects aristocracy. And yet here it is right in one of our songs. Well, what is that all about? And every gain divine. What are we? We are children of God. We are divine heirs. We are children of God. You are princes. You are princesses of the Most High God. Wow. That's our nobleness. That's our dignity, to practice what is good, what is holy, what is right, to, to bring about the virtues, to be the people we want to be, the people we ought to be by doing what we ought, not what we want. Because when we do what we want, we have regrets. Our nobility is stolen away from us. But when we do what we ought, when we do what is noble, what is good, we get exalted. By exalting our brothers, we get exalted. This is the nobleness of our country. This is the greatness of our country. This is the foundation of this country. And it is awesome. It is great. And we need to preserve it. And let people know. Let people know the dignity of this country. Let people know that this is a goodness. This is, this song is our history. This is proof of our foundation in God. In God we trust. So we fight. We fight on, not with swords, not by being mean, but with love, with charity, by raising people up, by giving people their human dignity. This is the greatness of our country. It's awesome. It's beautiful. Thank God. Thank God we live here. And we thank God that he will continue to be with us. He makes his promises. That he will bless us. It is a country that is awesome. Let's keep it awesome. Oh,